Good morning, Hope Community. It is Monday, February 21st. Today we are in chapter 28 of Acts. We're almost done. Is this the last chapter? It's the last chapter of Acts. Wow. Um, maybe we'll talk more about it um, tomorrow or Wednesday uh, to give you more context of why um, why it ends like this. Because some people, because it kind of ends with like what happens to Paul. Um, we'd still see his letters, you know, in Galatians, Ephesians. We still see the letters that he wrote while he was in prison. But, um, well, some of them he wrote when he was in prison. Um, so hopefully, you know, tomorrow or on Wednesday, I'll give you more context as to what happens with Paul. But um, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you guys if you guys were able to join us yesterday for our 9 a.m. service or our 6 p.m. service. And if you didn't get a chance to join us, it's on YouTube so you guys can watch the live stream um, as well. So we had a great time of worship. We had a great time of hearing the Word of God. And, um, and we're looking forward to Wednesday. Wednesday we're going to have a great services um, again. Before we get started, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you will speak to us through your Holy Spirit and through your Holy Word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So hopefully you guys had a chance to read yesterday, chapter 27. And if you didn't, um, I'm going to tell you what happens at the end, but go and read it. Paul um, is on his way to Rome. And the Paul warns them, like, hey, like we can't leave yet because there's going to be a storm. Uh, something's gonna happen and then the commander or the captain's like ah it's all right we got this you know we've seen you know we've we've been around the bay before we'll we'll be okay and they weren't okay um the storm was actually so strong and so rough that it actually started to break the the ship apart and so um at the end of chapter 27 the ship is breaking and they're getting shipped they're getting shipped right and all the prisoners are swimming to shore and one of one of the um one of the people who are in charge of the prisoners were like uh all these prisoners are gonna escape so let's kill them all <laughs> that in, that includes paul and actually that fun fact um so who wrote acts luke luke wrote, wrote acts um luke was there too and so they wanted to kill everyone there that was a prisoner um and one of the other one of the other um, people in authority they're like actually um, let's not kill everyone let's see if we can kind of hold on to them and keep them bound but let's not kill all of them and he said that because he wanted to save Paul um, thank God so we save Paul um, but they're still shipwrecked and so they end up on an island called Malta and this is where we leave off this is where we pick up where they were on their way to Rome and they get shipwrecked and now they're in Malta and so let's see what happens so. Chapter 28, 28, verse 1. Now, when they had escaped, shipwreck, um, they then found out that the island was called Malta. Verse 2. And the natives showed us unusual kindness. So here we see another another um, part where it switches um, perspective, where instead of Luke saying, this happened to Paul, or this happened to Silas, or this happened to this person, it said us. And the natives showed us. Why? Because this is... Luke was right there when this happened. Luke was shipped right, right with Paul. And he's literally taking account of everything that's happening um, here. So, and the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. In other words, um, a snake came out of the wood that he had gathered. They lit up a fire and there was a snake and then the snake came and bit Paul on the hand. So I, I find this hilarious sometimes, but keep in mind the culture because something funny and not so funny happens here. Um, actually, let's keep reading. Verse 4. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. Verse 5, But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. <laughs> but after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. <laughs> it's just so funny how this happens. If you remember, um, I forgot what city they're in. Um... But a couple of chapters ago, Paul and Silas, they were preaching the word of God and they thought that, that they were gods. They thought that, um, that Paul was Hermes and they thought Silas was Zeus. And then 
and then the, the, the Jewish leaders came and they're like, oh no, actually they're evil people. And then they turned against them and they wanted to kill them. It's just, it's funny how, how this happens where one moment people would think you're a murderer, then the next people, next moment people think you're gods. Um, but what's happening here? It's a very real thing. Like it's a, it's, it's, it's a very sudden experience that sometimes we might go through. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that you, you've been bitten by a snake or you've maybe been bitten by a, a spider or whatever it is. I'm not talking about that specifically, but sometimes life takes us by surprise. You know, we, I'm sure you can attest to this that you're not, the older you get, the more you realize that you're not in full control of your life. And sometimes things happen. Maybe it's a bad report. Maybe something happens at work. Maybe something happens in your family. Maybe something happens, you know, to your health, whatever it may be. Sometimes things can spring up and they can fasten on you. And it's, and maybe everyone around you, just like here, is like, oh, it's a bad report. Or maybe you did something to deserve it or whatever, whatever the lies are. But who was Paul? Paul was a righteous man who had an encounter with God and now he's following Jesus. And who are you? I'm believing that you are a person of God, a man or a woman of God, that you genuine, genuinely love Jesus. And I'm praying that you have or you had an encounter with him. So when, the, when, when, when these snakes of life spring up out of the fire and they fasten themselves to you, see, how did Paul react? He wasn't worried. It might have stung, it might have hurt, it probably hurt, I'm sure, I'm sure it hurt, but he just shook it off back into the fire, he just carried on, why? Because that's the kind of faith and the kind of trust he had in God. See, Paul was on his way to Rome, and he knew what was going to happen, and all, he knew that all this was was just a speed bump into where he was going. So maybe when these things happen in our life, maybe they're just speed bumps, and maybe we can trust God more than we can see what's happening. Amen? Amen. So let's see what happens. Um, Verse 7. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. And Paul went in to him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. Then they honored us in many ways, and when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. Wow, even more so. Someone say even more so. So even more so, it's not even um, this whole shipwreck. See, here's what Jesus said. The storm's coming to all of us, but it depends what our foundation is. Paul's foundation, we know very well, is in is rooted and grounded in God himself. Paul is rooted and grounded in who he is in Jesus. He knows God is going to take care of him no matter what. No matter what. Even if there's a shipwreck, even if a snake comes and bites him that's poisonous, even if everyone thinks Paul's going to die, he's going to get swollen and he's going to fall down dead. That's not what Paul is hearing, and that's not what Paul is seeing. Because Paul has his foundation in Jesus, amen? And I'm praying that you have your foundation in Jesus. But not only that, but now there's occasion. Now there's opportunity. See, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn for good. So I'm sure, I'm sure the enemy is trying to take out Paul with this shipwreck. The enemy is trying to take out Paul with this snake bite. But we turn that around, and we go from... From the enemy trying to take out Paul to now Paul bringing the gospel to this island. Now Paul is bringing this gospel to people who are in need. Now Paul is bringing healing. The healing power of Jesus is now present to heal these people in this land. So what started out as a shipwreck and what started out as as a snake biting Paul turns into probably the greatest blessing that's come to this island. And can we see our situations in that way? Where the speed bumps, the unexpected reports, now it's opportunity for us to believe Jesus and preach the gospel and to create opportunity for God to move in our lives just like God moved in this island. Amen? And here's the thing. Paul didn't plan any of this. Paul just kept living out the gospel. Amen? And that's what we're called to do. We're called to live out the gospel. So that when people see us, wow, 
they see Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you, Lord, that no matter what comes our way, no matter what life surprises spring up in our lives, we thank you, Lord, that we see circumstances as an opportunity for your hand to move through us, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, Monday, done. <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in to Daily Hope. Um, before we let you go, I want to remind you that people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorites. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m.